hi there and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to give you tips on using crayons so that you can unleash the potential of this underrated art material as we all know crayons are usually associated with kids art materials and is very seldom regarded as something to be used to make a decent artwork but from what i discovered it is very much possible to use crayons in making great art and today I'm letting you in on the secrets, and I'll give you tips and tricks on how you can make crayons work. You may also want to get a pen and paper ready so you can take notes, or, you can draw along with me. Please note that the things I'll be telling you today are my personal preferences and experience and is not a fast and hard rule. Anyways, art doesn't have any boundaries or limits to begin with. Speaking of beginning, let's start. For my first tip, it's going to be about the basic art material that is commonly looked over and disregarded. Paper is basically the foundation of most art that we do, so selecting the correct paper that will work with your coloring medium, is very important in the final outcome. Normally, we just use any paper that we have, disregarding its properties and characteristics. For crayons that are typically waxy, we're going to need paper that the wax can adhere to, so use paper that has rough or textured surface. A paper's roughness and texture is also referred to sometimes as the tooth of the paper. You may also want to consider paper that is a bit thicker so that it can withstand heavy pressure when burnishing or finalizing your artwork, and avoid tearing and crumpling. Again, crayons are thick and waxy, so it will need to have something to hold onto, especially when coloring with several layers. Now that I've mentioned it, next stop is layering. In the past, I've made the mistake of using crayons like oil pastels and immediately go to hyperdrive and color with heavy pressure. The result of this is that layering can no longer be possible as the wax have already built up so much. Adding additional layers is going to be a nightmare as the layers will just crumble off from the paper's surface. So when you start coloring, start with a very light pressure. Don't press hard on the crayon just yet, as this will be done at the end of the coloring process. The final step in coloring is called burnishing, where you put more pressure in coloring to lock in the pigment. This next tip is my own personal preference whenever I begin coloring my artwork. I call this step color blocking. Color blocking is used at the start, along with coloring with a very light pressure. Color blocking is basically laying out the colors that you'll be using. Once you're done with color blocking, it gives you an idea on how the colors would look like, although the colors are very faint. I find color blocking helpful in a way that if ever the color doesn't look right, I can still correct or change it by coloring over it, so by the time I'm on the burnishing process, I'll be confident that I have selected the right shade of colors, and the final artwork would look as intended. Next tip is something I got off from using oil pastels in color pencils, where I use white as a blender, to smoothen gradients, and soften color fades. A white crayon can do this too. Yes, it can blend and blur colors to have a smooth gradient effect just like pastels and color pencils, although it's not as good, but it helps. So if you're thinking that white crayons are the most useless color in the set, I'm sure you'll change your mind once you get to try this hack. So when I need to smoothen a gradient, light pressure must be used on both the base color and the white crayon. I start with the base color, then smudge or smoothen it using the white crayon. I do this step twice or thrice until the blending is smooth. And by the way, just a word of caution though, some crayon brands will have a different formulation and may have a different effect. I have tried this process on 8 other different brands and so far, I find Crayola crayons are the easiest one to use. They say Caron Dash crayons blend well like pastels, but I haven't tried that brand yet because it's way out of my budget. I personally think that it's too expensive for a crayon so I've only tried this step on brands that you'll generally see in art stores and school supplies section in department stores. Now let's talk about layering. There are a few reasons why I use layering. Number one is what I previously mentioned. I layer a base color and white to create a smooth gradient. Number two is when I combine two colors to create the shade I need. Like for example in skin tones. If I don't have the color I need for the blush on the face, I will first layer a light peach base color, then, I add in the pink, then finally, go over it with peach again so as to tone down the saturation of the pink color. The result is a softer, natural colored blush. If I didn't layer in the colors, the blush would just be a blob of super saturated, off-colored pink. The third reason I layer colors is when I need to add depth and shading. 
so when shading, I normally use 2 to 3 colors. Then like the previous process I mentioned, I go back and forth between colors so that I'll have smoother gradients and transitions. Just a quick note on layering, if you're going to use this technique, do not use heavy pressure or burnishing. Remember that if the wax from the crayon builds up on paper, it'll be near impossible to blend, and crumbling and peeling may also occur. So just use very light pressure as you go back and forth with the colors. Now that we have the layering and blending techniques down, next on our list is shading. We all know that shading gives your drawing more depth and realism, so being able to do this with crayons is simply amazing. Since shading involves multiple colors, always err to the side of caution, and use light pressure until you're able to build up the shading you intended. When shading, I'm sure most of us have used just black in the past to darken the tone of another color and create that shading effect. Using black is okay though, but I just think that black can be too harsh sometimes. So when I do shading, I use contrasting colors. For example, if my base color is red, I'll use green or if my base is yellow, I'll use purple, and so on and so forth. Also, remember the rules of layering we discussed earlier to effectively execute this process. When using this technique, refer to the color wheel for easier reference on contrast colors and their equivalent. When burnishing, or finalizing the color of your work, don't hold the crayon like you would a normal pen or pencil. The warmth from your hand softens the wax, plus, the heavy pressure as you color, would definitely break the crayon. So if you don't like short, broken crayons, hold it at the tip like you would, when sketching, or using pastels. This would put the pressure only at the tip, and also distance the crayon from the warmth of your palm and fingers. Here is an additional tip I can give you. Crayons, like color pencils, need to be sharpened too so that you can color in more detail. If the tip of your crayon gets used up, don't try to color in details with it. A stumpy crayon is okay to use when you're coloring a large section but never attempt to color in detail as it is hard to determine where the tip would fall. So go get yourself a crayon sharpener or grab the Crayola 64 set as it includes a crayon sharpener at the back of the box. The sharpener from Crayola is by far the best one there is, as it brings back the tip to its original shape, just like as if it just came out of the box. I have tried other crayon sharpeners that were available in the school supplies section, but it can't sharpen crayons like the original Crayola sharpener. I've even tried using sharpeners that are originally made for pencils, but this too, didn't work as expected. It made the tip into an awkward shape, and sometimes would break easily because the shape that it gets into is not intended for crayons. The original crayon sharpener is only available in Crayola sets with 64 colors and above, so you might spend a little more just to get the original Crayola crayon sharpener. But it would benefit you in the long run as it ensures that you always have a perfect, out-of-the-box tip every time. Plus, you'll get more colors to work with so you don't have to blend colors as much, unlike a fewer color set. In general, a freshly sharpened crayon is easier to color with, rather than a stumpy one. Alright, so far, those are some of the things that I do to make art using crayons. I hope you can give it a try as well, and let me know how it turned out by leaving a comment below. Also, take note that you don't have to do all of them though, as these are just my personal preferences. You can just pick ones that you think would work for you in your process, and add it to your current ones. By the way, if I missed anything or if you also have other hacks and tips on using crayons, please share it with everyone by leaving a comment below. I very much appreciate and interested in trying out new hacks and techniques from you guys. Also, before I forget, please leave a like if you enjoyed today's video, and don't forget to subscribe, so I can continue creating more content like these for you. Thanks for watching and I hope you also have a great time with using crayons. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.